God gave us autonomy. And in that autonomy, the heart can go from benevolence to malevolence. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. The prison is filled with each and every ethnicity that exists. In that autonomy, we have this freedom. We can, we can, we can uh, engage the world in virtue and kindness with love and unity on our hearts. Or we can go shoot people at church. That's the cost of the freedom to be able to design the life that you want to live. And, and others have that right too. And it's a scary thought. We take solace in God. We take refuge in the promises. But I'm gonna tell you right now, as an African American, it's scary. I'm, I, I, sometimes I get nervous being in crowds. It's the truth. For all of us that have been rejected, for all of us that have suffered because we're overweight, because our hair is nappy, because our hair is purple, because our hair is spiked, because we have a big butt or no butt, or we lost our hair at an early age, or maybe we're gray. For whatever reason, the world has attacked you and beaten you up. When you pray, when you pray for those that are suffering, when you pray for those individuals and their children and their spouses, remember what it feels like to be threatened. Remember what it feels like to be displaced by society. Try to understand what it feels like to live in fear. I'm a really nice person. If you shoot me, the world's gonna miss out, right? So when we engage the world and someone doesn't look the way we look or somebody's dirty and grungy or maybe they're begging for money, I don't know, whatever it is that you think is wrong in life, they deserve to live their lives as well. They deserve to pursue what happiness means to them as long as it does not entail harm or harming others. So this is a prayer from our bishop. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to shut up. Dear Lord, we come to you as your children, seeking your wisdom and patience in the midst of our bewilderment. You have made humankind so magnificently and so powerfully, but we lose our way before we can arrive at the kind of love with which you made us. We know it is there because we are the work of your hands, and we ask your gentle hand to guide us to it and place it at the center of all things and nations, races, and people. We turn to you and to you alone as we cry out once again that we are love because you are love and we are from you. How can anyone hope to love anyone if they do not ever love anyone? How can anyone seek to overcome darkness with darkness? How can anyone hate anyone without hating everyone? Turn our hearts to neither the left nor the right, but only to you. We read your word and hear your love it, hear your love in it, even when people in Egypt and Syria and South Carolina die for it. We lift up. And I pray that you have these people on your heart, especially their children and those that concern them. Our brother, Honorable Reverend Clementa Pickney, 41, Pastor, State Senator. Our sister, Cynthia Hurd, 54, Sister Ethel Lance, 70. Our brother, Reverend DePayne Middleton, doctor, 49. Sister, Reverend Sharonda Singleton, 45. Our brother, Reverend Daniel Simmons, 74. Myra Thompson, 59. Susie Jackson, 87. Twanza Sanders, 26. And even our brother, the suspected shooter, Dylan Roof. I pray for Dylan. And I thank God for the heart that he's given me that I can even pray for Dylan. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you today. We're going to continue with our service. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good to see you all here. We all look 
bright and sunshiny on this beautiful summer day, and I just want to wish everyone a happy Father's Day as well. If you didn't already get one of these, make sure you get one of these neat little treats um, for all you dads out there, and anyone who would like one, there's a basket uh, right where you get the bulletin, so make sure you get one of these, and Michelle made these, so that was very kind of her to make those. Help us get ready for Vacation Bible School. Donation tags are in the Narthex hallway. To donate, choose an item. Take the top tag and write your name on the corresponding tag underneath. Then return your tag with the item to the church office. Vacation Bible School will be July 13th through 16th. Dinner starts at 5.30 and the program is from 6 to 8.30. Contact the church office if you have any questions on VBS. Relay for Life is this Friday. Donations will be turned in tomorrow, so today is the last church day to donate. There will also be a brief team meeting after church in Grace Hall. If you want to participate or donate, please see Wendy after service. If you were unable to attend the Wills workshop, there are some extra packets in the office for anyone who wants that information. And on July 12th, there is no joint UMC service in the park. Instead, it will be Reverend Laura's first service with a reception for her after service in Grace Hall. Also, Comea servers are needed for Thursday dinner and Sunday breakfast. If no one signs up, we will have to cancel. So if you are able to donate your time to be a Comea server, please sign up for that. And with that, we move on to our birthdays and anniversaries this week. Oh, is there a pair of keys that were found? You won't be able to go very far, I suppose, <laughs> afterwards. So if you're missing some keys. All right. Birthdays and anniversaries this week. We'll have Juliana go around with the birthday cake. Um, if you would like to contribute a dollar or a dollar for every year, you're you're celebrating your birthday or anniversary, and a donation is greatly appreciated, and the money does go to help those in the community. So just raise your hand if you have a donation for the birthday cake. Birthdays this week, Glenda Haley on the 22nd. Brian Martin on the 24th. Kathy Orr on the 26th. And anniversaries, June 25th, Russell and Kirsten Anderson, four years. Also, June 27th, celebrating two very special anniversaries, Orville and Ruth Cousins, celebrating 61 years, as well as Bobby and Mary Lou Markham, 61 years as well. And because of these two very special anniversaries, there will be cake in Grace Hall after service today in celebration. So happy birthday and happy anniversary to you all. Let us continue with worship.
Good morning. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, Guide My Feet, which can be found on page 2208 of the Black, The Faith We Sing hymnal. be seated and I invite our children to come forward for children's time. You gotta love family. Family's wonderful. Thanks for coming up. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Okay, so give me words to do. Did you know that everybody has a dad? It's Father's Day. Everybody has a dad. Whether your dad is tall or small or that was really inadvertent. But anyway, um, um, or whether your dad's around a lot or not so much, everybody has a dad. Everybody has a father. Yeah. So give me words to describe your dad. <laughs> nice, church-appropriate words to describe your dad. Fuzzy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> words to describe your dad. Mm, this is a hard one, apparently. Red. Red? Oh, you're sporting a little bit of color today. Yes, uh-huh. Yep. What else? What else you got? Awesome, good one. Focused. Focused, another good one. Okay. Kenny? Yeah. Uh, not yet, you're only 45. <laughs> Older than you. I think said crotchety. Oh, crotchety. <laughs> nah, nah. Okay, what emotions do you think your dad has? <laughs> Happiness, good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Frustration. Frustration. He's the father of teenagers, so that happens. <laughs> yeah. What else? Oh. Love. Good one. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes. What other emotions do you think your dad has? Anger. Sometimes anger. Yeah. Sadness. Sometimes sadness. Yeah. Compassion. Compassion. No. Yesterday I went inside, inside Out. Have you seen it yet? It's a good movie really fun. Talks about all the emotions that go on in your head and you get to hear what all the emotions are feeling and thinking and then the little girl, she's 11, her name is Riley and she gets to try and figure out how to deal with all these emotions that are arguing for time inside her head. It's pretty good. Do you think your dad has emotions too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes he gets to display them and yeah, and sometimes he doesn't get to display them. Sometimes he has to be calm and not display all the emotions that are going on in his head. Yeah, yeah. So um, what do you think about our Holy Father? Do you think our Holy Father is red? Maybe. Do you think our Holy Father is focused? 
Do you think our Holy Father is fuzzy? Uh, he obviously is kind. He's kind, yeah. yes, and loving. loving, yeah, compassionate. Do you think our Holy Father has emotions? Uh, yeah, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. And do you think our Holy Father? Go ahead, Barb. Does everything for us in the whole world. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think he gets frustrated with us? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Do you think he loves us? Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he displays his love yeah. and his frustration? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But we, again, and I know I talk all the time is that, you know, he, well, he displays all these things. It's up to us to see them and it's up to us to understand them. And sometimes I don't want to see them and sometimes I don't <laughs> want to understand them. And uh, the Bible goes, um, has many different passages about how you're supposed to obey your father. Why do you think we should do that? Oh, Barb says. Do what he says and argue with him. No, instead of. Instead, instead of arguing with him. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Barb. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I argue with God. Sometimes I think I know best. And that doesn't always work out for me. Yeah. Do you, do you obey your, um, the Holy Father, but do you also obey your, your dad here? <laughs> do you, what happens if I would ask your dads? If you obey. <laughs> what do you think? Mostly? Mostly? Do you argue with your dad? Sometimes, yeah. And then all those emotions come along for, for good reasons. You argue for good reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I think that dads have a lot of emotions, and sometimes our society lets them display those emotions or doesn't let them display them. Um, but again, just like with our Holy Father, we have to be in tune to what people need, and we have to keep an eye out for that. And so obey your father. Love your father. And trust that they have a thought that's going on in your well-being, that they do love you and they want um, to take care of you. And then also, take care of your father. They're important, and it's nice that you have them around. Thank you. As we move into our time of prayer, we have some joys and concerns to lift up. And if you have a prayer that you want me to read off of a prayer card, feel free to bring that up to me. Cruz Cordova passed away Wednesday, June 17th. We lift up prayers for his wife, Louise, and their family. Concerns. Delight Klinkhammer, Shelly's mom. Uh, Shelly reports that her heart is not beating in sync and she will have to have surgery. Paul Rogers, Shelley's brother-in-law, the tumor in his lungs keeps growing even after eight months of aggressive chemo. Charlotte Latham is in the hospital with a severe esophageal infection. She is on antibiotics and hopes to be home soon. Janice Fisher, her 14-year-old son is facing life-changing circumstances. So we lift you up and him up in prayer. Joy's Sean Horton has been promoted to admin supervisor. That is a great joy. His hours will be mostly Monday through Friday, and he will be able to attend church on Sundays again. Yay. Yay. Were there any other prayers? Today's prayer was written by Reverend Chuck Curry. Please join me in prayer. We give our thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your blessings for them all, and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families, 
and in the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond reach. So too we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent, grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors and coaches, and the women of our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. Lord, we lift up this prayer in your name as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I wanted to do special music today because tomorrow's my birthday and this song is my family's anthem and as sad as funerals and memorial services can be we all wail on this one and I have a family with mandolins and banjos and guitars and everything you can imagine and if I was you sitting listening to this song I'd be singing it so you are more than welcome to sing with us. This morning's, this morning's scripture reading comes from Psalm 100, which can be found on page 522 of your Bible. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. 
Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Short. There. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? That Bible verse, the 100th Psalm, was one that it was mumbled a lot in our family. Make a joyful noise. I was raised that if you make a noise, it better be joyful. <laughs> and if you were going to make a noise, anything else that wasn't joyful, you were asked to leave until you could be joyful. I was glad I was brought up that way. So throughout today's sermon, you'll be asked to read with me Bible verses that should help us reflect. These are the Bible verses that make me an optimist. My husband often says, okay, what's the upside of this, sunshine? And it doesn't take long to come up with one. So let's read verse 1. Now these verses are in your bulletin. So if you open up your bulletin, you'll have those verses, and I'd like you to read with me. Verse 1, John 1, 16. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. Each of us surely have had moments in our life that we have all felt blessed. It might be the birth of a child long awaited. We get to celebrate with a couple like that. It might have been um, knowing that someone is out of peril and safe. Leon's feeling that today. And it might have been just being in the right place at the right time. Boy, I like those moments. Or it could have been not being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We mourn with the community today. So it could have been a time that you realized that really you were pretty well off once you figured out what somebody else was going through. A true for the grace of God go I moment. And it could be a time when you made it through a really rough patch that you didn't see any sunshine or light at the end of the tunnel but you woke up the next morning. So whatever the situation is, I feel that all of us have been blessed by God that are sitting here today, or we wouldn't be sitting here today. So my name is Glenda, and I was born an optimist. Noah Webster thinks an optimist feels hopelessness or hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of an event. The second definition is the one that aligns more with my message today, I think. And it's a philosophy or a doctrine that this world is the best of all worlds. And the belief that good must ultimately prevail over evil in the universe. So let's read verse 2. Ephesians 2, verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this, not from yourselves, it is a gift from God. It is primarily the gifts that we've all been given by God that instills in me my undying faith and optimistic view. I don't think any of us sitting here today doubts that the Lord has blessed us in one way or another. The mere fact that we were able to get up and get here today is a blessing in itself. Some for others, more you know, Linda and I got that garden planted this week, and in less than 24 hours, rabbits, we assume, had a wonderful dinner of all of your cabbages. Did they feel blessed? I hope so. Could we have grumbled? Yes, we could have grumbled, but we laughed, and we planted more cabbages, and we put somewhat of a gate around them so you can have cabbages, hopefully. So, I know, as an optimist thinks, is going through a hard winter in Wyoming really all that bad? 
is replanting a garden after a hailstorm or getting your car fixed really the end of the world? I don't think so. Really? An inconvenience, yes, end of the world, no. The fact that we are alive is such a blessing. We can learn so much from people who have gone through tragedies. We've seen them on TV, their house is blown away by tornadoes and they're just glad they're all alive. Testimonial after testimonial of that. Cancer survivors who get another chance to tell everybody around them just how much they love them. And if you've ever been around somebody that's a cancer survivor, and I have, those hugs mean so much more. I just came back from a visit with my sister. So all of a sudden, those little pet peeves just don't seem so important. The grandchildren's annex become amusements, not annoyances. And the detours that life throws us are looked upon as new adventures that can take place. Once visiting a, with a friend of mine who is a very religious friend, she commented that she sometimes questioned her faith. And then she added that she thought everybody questioned their faith. And I said, I don't. Because <laughs> I don't. She said, really? Not ever? And I said, oh, I used to. Then I just started going outside more and laughed. Because I believe our faith, a gift from God, was given for us to sustain us through hardships. Whatever life throws us, it gets us through. He gave us the power of prayer so that we can express, we can ask, we can share, we can release our thoughts, needs, and wants. Whenever and whatever we want to do. No cell phone towers needed for this call. How lucky are we? So when I say I started going outside more and it made a difference, I wasn't joking. When you see the birds flying across, across the sky, or you hear that meadow lark song that we hear, when you look down in the dirt, brown dirt, and you see new life poking through that dirt that guarded the roots and the soils until God's sun and water came and gave them life again. It encourages their growth and it encourages my faith. Every time I see a child, my faith gets stronger. I love hanging out clothes. Thank you, Dan, where are you? Dan's why I get to hang out clothes. He gave me a clothesline. And it makes me stop and think just what a wonderful world it is that we live in. So maybe our faith doesn't need so much to be worked on or growing, but rather it needs to be unwrapped like the gift it is. Now speaking of gifts, verse 3, time to read Romans 12, 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. Is a man's gift is prophesizing, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. Thank you. Let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. This Bible verse should just remind us just how much a church, a body, a church, relies on the gifts of all the people in it. Surely each of us have gifts and talents that we have received from God, something that we just seem to have a knack for. Shall we? It's numbers. Some of us, it's leadership. Some of us, it's the hugs we get. Wendy, it's tech. Sometimes we get gifts and we put them away, and we forget we were even given them. Not until we were reminded that we could use it do we get it back out of the closet or drawer or pull them out. We just dust them off, look at them, and we, we usually appreciate them a little bit better with new eyes. Oh my gosh, I can't remember, you know, I don't even remember getting this. We have an opportunity to look at the old gifts that we have in us because we're getting a new pastor. It's an opportunity to offer up a new facet of ourselves. 
It's a time to redefine our faith. So I don't look at it as a sad time. I'm happy for Pastor Sandy. I'm happy for her family. What growth they have in front of them. With some frustration. We can be there for them when they come back, you know, when they come back or they need those little Facebook pages. They need that optimistic little note. Give it to them. Be right there for them. So this is when I always remember what my dad would say. And he'd mumble out of his breath. If not you, who? If not now, when? It's time. Verse 4, 2 Timothy 1, 6 to 7. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The devotional publication, The Upper Room, makes up for some great reading. So if you're ever, you know, just stuck somewhere, have one of those in the car with you or something, because it's great reading. This one really st stuck with me, because it goes so closely to this. And it's stories written just by regular people like you or me. You could write something, send it to The Upper Room, and it would get published. So this one's called Stir It Up. Written by a Joe Walker from Oregon. Do you know him there, guys? Okay. He wrote it one day when he remembered something his mother would say to his dad when he asked for more sugar for his coffee. Now, this was during World War II. Now, some of us are remembering that a whole lot more than others. I wasn't born then. I was born the next year. Okay? So, but in teaching school, teaching about all the rationing stamps. So anybody younger than me... They had rationing stamps and how much they helped each other during these rationing stamps with the gas and the sugars and everything. And many, many families would help each other. Like if somebody had a dad who the money was a traveling salesman, he didn't get any more gas rations than some housewife sitting at home with kids. And so families would get together and they would give their gas stamps to this family that had a traveling salesman for a dad. And then they might say, well, I'll give you my sugar ones. They, they were always, people were always trading those rationing stamps around. And sugar was one of the things that was rationed. If you had somebody's birthday coming up, like in my family, it was, there was two birthdays in one month. And they had to go beg for more sugar things so that cakes could be made. I mean, it was just such a time that people aren't remembering that. And so his mother would always say when he'd say, oh, man, I just wish I had some more sugar for my coffee. And she'd say, eh, just stir up what's already in your cup. Just stir it up. And I thought, you know, if we just stirred up what God has already given us, if we just stir it up, you know, then we'll have plenty to keep us busy, happy, thankful, grateful. You get the picture. We could. He continues that we underestimate the capacity that most humans have to love, to be generous, to be hopeful and good. And I think we do underestimate people. But you know what? We live in a wonderful community. I've lived in lots of communities. And never have I seen a community that has a Cheyenne Day of Giving. So we live in a wonderful community. And I do think that people underestimate people's goodness and generosity. Clearly, it is no secret that regular people that follow the Lord's teachings and beliefs move mountains. They feed multitudes and serve mankind. So it is using the gift of compassion that we gift others. Let's not forget that. Somebody please sign up for, to serve Kamiya Thursday. Yep, let's just stir it up. Verse 5, Acts 20, 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remember the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so I challenge all of us to dig deep and think of new ways that we might use the gifts that God has given each one of us. Grace lets us practice this giving in so many ways. So have you kind of forgotten about the food basket that's in the Narthex? Could you maybe, when you go grocery store shop and grab an extra can of green beans? The giving on that's gone way down. 
So could we maybe just kind of stir that up a little bit and bring some more macaroni, shove it in that basket there? You know, I think we could. Could we bring more coins and put them in the plates? Twelve organizations get our help. The church matches and gives $100 more dollars to that. All loose coins go to 12 agencies in town. So could we maybe grab some extra coins when we come to church on Sunday? I hope so. And so, yes, I believe that this world is the best of all possible worlds to live in because people give and are generous. And I hold so tight to that belief that good must ultimately prevail over evil in the universe. And I want to be a part of that good every day, every hour, every minute. If you can smile at somebody, smile at them. If you can give somebody a pat on the back, pat them on the back. So it is, if not you, who? If not now, when? I am an optimist. And here's the good news. You can be one, too. <laughs> it's just a frame of mind. You, too, can look at life through rose-colored glasses. You, too, can see only the good in people. You, too, can count your blessings. Optimists have a tendency to count them twice. We're just so darn glad. You, too, can believe in a giving Lord, and you can be thankful. Words seem a little too short of the gratitude that I feel for all the blessings that have come my way, especially this year. <laughs> so I think perhaps God, though, would rather that we thank him in deeds, not words. Could we be using our gifts to help mankind more? Could we use it to praise his holy name, to feed the hungry, to help another find their faith? Boost somebody's faith when they're the ones that say, I think everybody questions their faith. Can you be the one that says, I don't? Our Methodist church was built on a philosophy from John Wesley. And it says, do all the good you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, in all the times you can, to all the people you can, for as long as you can. The Methodist church was based on this thought. So in the end, we have come out with so much more than we have given in. We have received the most gifts. We have been given gifts of faith, prayer, hope, and love. And if all that wasn't enough to make you look on the bright side of the street, verse 6, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So I'll fly away. I'll fly away. And we don't sing it slow and with expression. I scratched it out. We sing it fast and with joy. And so, yes, I do believe this world is the best of all worlds, for now. <laughs> because my faith lets me know I'm going to a better one. And I hold tight to the belief that good must ultimately prevail over the evil in this universe. But I do look forward to that eternal life. And my name is Glenda, and God made me an optimist. And your faith can make you be one. And I thank him for sending me to grace. Thank you. Now, I can't sit up here and say my faith was all my own doing. I had great-grandparents. And I had a mother that would stand at the end of the stairs, bottom of the stairs, and yell, You get up and go to church, or I'll come up there and beat the hell out of you. I'm so glad that more days than not, I voted to go ahead and get dressed and come on down those stairs. And so in honor of my parents and my grandparents, the closing hymn today is just a closer walk with thee.
hold hands and let nobody be left out. <laughs> Dear Lord, may we be ever thankful of the many gifts that God has given us. May we make, take time in our life daily to notice them. But more importantly, may we go out and use our gifts every day. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>